Hey everyone. I'm really excited to share with you this new book that I'm diving into that's called The Gap and The Gain. And I got to be honest, I'm being a little selfish here because this is something that I'm using in my own life and it's really, really helpful. Um, and one of the ways that I'm trying to reinforce that is by, by sharing it with people. So if you get something out of this, uh, let me know. We're going to be working this way in Journey to You for the next number of months and honestly probably for the rest of the time that I run Journey to You just because really like what I'm doing now is I'm in the business of habits and changing habits and in doing that I'm acknowledging that that enters a realm of behavioral science and with with behavioral science it really gets hand in hand with what I think of as habit evolution and it's an evolving, right? Because as we're changing our behaviors, we're probably not trying to change our behaviors for the worse. We're trying to, to evolve. We're not trying to get addicted to things that aren't good for us or don't serve us, but rather try to automate behaviors and actions that, that are healthy and that keep us balanced and, and happy and fulfilled. All right. So we're going to talk about the gain versus the gap and the gap and the gain. And I think this will be really helpful as we prepare to move through the holiday season. Um, but if you're watching this video at some other time, just know that this can be applied uh, anywhere, anytime. Um, since we are, since I am recording this the night before Thanksgiving, I just want to bring up that like the holidays can be sort of a triggering time for people. Uh, stuff comes up in the holiday season that doesn't normally come up in other times of the year. And we're going to kind of use this gain and gap thinking to try to evolve the way that you're moving through the next couple of months. And we're going to do it together so we can actually get the benefits of the teachings together. Now, to start all this off, I want to do a visualization process. And this is very important. I know for some people, you hear that word visualization and you might think it's a little woo woo. And that's fine if you think that. But I really firmly believe that it's the first, it's the first incarnation. The visualization and the imagination process is the first incarnation of making someone's dream a reality or taking steps towards achieving the goal that you're working on. There's this great quote that goes, everything in the universe is created twice. First in our minds as imagination, intention, ideas, thoughts and dreams, then in the physical world as tangible physical objects or actions. So you gotta see it before you do it. You gotta imagine it and you can actually put it into, into form. And the concept here that we're gonna be working with is that the more strongly you visualize the thing, the more clear and specific you'll be with the ideal. We're gonna walk away from this session today with an ideal. And then we're gonna to start to take actionable steps towards that ideal. So grab yourself a pen and a piece of paper, press pause if you still need to get one of those. And as I walk you through this guided visualization, you can go inward and we're gonna really treat this as an introspective activity, but have the pen and paper right there. So as stuff comes up, you can jot it right down. You could you capture it. So it's like you're capturing the thing and guess what? That's sort of the next process of, of the manifestation. It's one thing here, and then it becomes um, more in form. It's more in form as we put the ink or the lead, or they try to use pen and paper or pencil and paper. Don't type this stuff out if you can help it. So, all right, let's settle into this visualization. Like, what do you want the next couple of months of your life to be like, and how how do you wanna go into the new year? So go ahead and take a longer exhalation. Just get into your body and then allow a deeper breath to come in and get a vision of what ideally, ideally what it is that you wanna feel like on January 1st. How is it that you feel? How is it that you look? What's going on in your life? What things have you completed? What projects that you have going on have reached completion at this point? What did you learn 
or what skills did you strengthen between now and then? And then you might also consider or jot down, like, what do you want to have happen? What is, what is the ideal here? What do you want to be eating? What do you actually want to be craving, if you will? What do you want to be nourishing yourself with? How much sleep are you getting? Again, we're projecting forward five weeks, two months, January 1st, or again, whatever your timeline is that you're working with. If you are practicing this in the holiday season, put yourself on the other side of the holiday season. What do you want to have done? Who do you want to have connected with? What relationships do you want to have had you know, certain experiences with? What experiences have you had? And then ask yourself, like, what plans do you want to have ready to put into place in January, in 2022, or in this next phase of your life? So we're going through this introspective process to really see what is the ideal hang on to that word and concept ideal for our projected self that really like this will be my reality and I will have made this my ideal I will have made my ideal into my reality it's like it's it's a really intense time of year if you're in the holidays right now because it's, it's the end of the year and I know that that can feel artificial with like new year's resolutions and stuff like that but like you have to also consider the fact that there's solstices at this time of year so there's an energetic behind all of this that can really feel like a closure so there's something that's ending and so it's like what do you want to have gotten done by the closure of the year and i'd really i'd really pay attention to that like what needs to have been achieved in 2021? What needs to be achieved, accomplished, experienced, checked off the list? What things do you want to be on the other side of? And also, like, what do you want to have in motion? Certain projects, because things aren't just you know, done and complete. There's an ongoing motion and that can be relational. It can be, um, it can be a project that's in a certain state of being. So I just want you to spend a couple minutes and look down, like, what have you written? And if you didn't write anything, maybe go back and watch the video again and, and write some things down. Make sure it's true. You should look at your paper and be like, yeah, that's my ideal. That's my ideal January 1st experience or insert whatever date that you're working with. Consider your calendar. It's a good, it's a good way to think about it. Like, what does your day look like? What is your calendar flow? What is your daily flow, your weekly flow look like? All right, so that's the, that's the visualization process. Again, if you need to go back and do a little bit more brainstorming, if you wanna just take some more time really focusing on what the ideal is. And it's funny when we work with the ideal, you might not be used to it. The ideal, it can build on what we currently have, but there should be something built into the ideal that isn't yet because it's potential, it's future, it's desire, it's the ideal. And so it's important that you actually like tap deeply into that sense of like what you want, how you want your life to be and trust that the intelligence for the vision of that life, of your life, it exists within you. All right. Stay tuned for the next video when I draw out and explain the gap and the gain.